I'm Michael Ostacher. I'm an associate professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Stanford University School of Medicine in Palo Alto, California. I'm primarily a mood disorder researcher with a specific interest in bipolar disorder and comorbid substance use disorders. There are two papers that I've written, one where I was the first author and one where I was a, a collaborator that I'm quite proud of. Uh, the paper that I wrote as the first author is a paper that looks in the STEP-BD data set at whether or not people who have alcohol or drug use disorders have a more difficult time recovering from an episode of depression than people who uh, never had a history of drug or alcohol problems. What we found in, in, in our analysis of the data was that drug and alcohol problems didn't have an impact on how long it took people to get better that people who had drug and alcohol problems were just as likely to recover and just as quickly to recover as people who didn't have them. And the reason I'm proud of the paper is that it sort of turns people's conventional wisdom on its head. That is, people in general felt that people with alcohol and substance problems were harder to treat and didn't get better. And so this often led to people refusing to treat them. And what we found in this study was that having a diagnosis of a drug or alcohol problem what made you no less likely to get better. And it's really an important thing in terms of reducing stigma. And so it's probably the paper that I'm most proud of. The other paper that I'm quite proud of is uh, the paper from the Balance Study published in The Lancet in 2010. Uh, this is a study that uh, John Geddes and Guy Goodwin put together at Oxford to look at maintenance treatments in bipolar disorder in which they compared the combination of lithium and valproate to monotherapy treatment with either of those drugs alone. And it found that while combination therapy was better than valproate, lithium too was better than valproate. And it was a study that showed that lithium continues to have important efficacy in the treatment of bipolar disorder. So the, the question is, what books or papers would I recommend to psychiatrists to read? I, I would leave it more towards areas that people need to be aware of rather than specific papers or books. I think that every practicing clinician needs to have a basic understanding of statistics and epidemiology. These are things that are not necessarily taught in medical school, they're not necessarily taught well, and they're certainly not emphasized. Uh, in medical training in any way. Yet, once people are in practice, they are the tools by which people can determine whether or not evidence is valid or not valid. And people need to have basic skills in understanding how studies are designed, how results are interpreted, uh, whether or not a study is done well, whether or not a study is done poorly, what issues involved with bias and confounding are uh, in studies that might be important to understand. And I think it's important for uh, practicing clinicians and researchers, obviously, to have a basic understanding of statistics and bioepidemiology in order to have effective careers.